This video will show you how to use the simulator. So the simulator is a way to test your code before you program it onto your microchip. So with the simulator, you're going to be running your code on your computer, not on the microchip. So there are limitations to what you can do with the simulator, but it does have some nice features that allow you to step through your code and look for places where the logic is not behaving quite the way you intended. So to begin with, we need some code. So I have created a new project and I've just put the code that we had from lab one, the original code in there. And I'm gonna scroll right to this main function. And here you see the message that it types out and I'm gonna add just a little bit more code here. I'm gonna put in a for loop. And inside my for loop, I'm just gonna have a no operation command. So it's basically a do nothing statement. So if I just ran the simulator right now, it would run my code in the background forever and I would never see anything useful. So to make the simulator useful, I need to add some breakpoints. A breakpoint is just a place where your code stops and that gives you an opportunity to see what's happening at that moment in the code. So to set a breakpoint, you can just click on the line numbers and it adds a little pink box. So that's a breakpoint. And here's a question for you. I've got a breakpoint set on this line. When the simulator gets to this line, is it gonna print this line or not? So it should print the one above it, but will it print this line or does it stop before it executes this line of code? Well, we're gonna find out. And I'll put a second breakpoint down here on this NOP line. There are some other things that you can do with the simulator, which I'm gonna show you presently, but for now, let's just start this. So to run the debugger, I click on debug at the top and then debug main project. And what it's gonna do first is it's gonna compile my code and then it'll start running the simulator. So first we have to wait for it to finish compiling. And there's our build successful message. So now it should start running the simulator next. Okay, and so now it's running the simulator and it got to our first breakpoint. And remember my question, does it actually execute this code or not? Well, we don't know because we don't have a physical display. I'm going to be showing you later how to do that. So for now, we can't answer the question, but we can see that it got to that breakpoint and it stopped the code. You'll also notice that up at the top of the screen, we've got some new icons. So there's a play button and a stop button. There's also a pause button, but we're already paused at a breakpoint, so it's grayed out. And reset, which goes back to the beginning of the program. So I want to go to my next breakpoint. What do I do? I just click this play button and it goes to my next breakpoint. And this is inside a for loop, so it should run a few times. So if I press play again, it comes back to that same line. So it doesn't look like anything changed just because I'm inside that for loop. And indeed, I'll have to run it a few more times before it'll leave that loop and get back into the infinite while loop, which means that it prints out that original message again. And then one more click takes me back into my for loop. When I wanna stop running the simulator, I can just click the stop button here. So as I said, we still haven't answered the question of whether or not when you hit a breakpoint, that line of code actually executes. So I don't know whether this printf statement, the second one, is going to print or not when I stop at the breakpoint. And that's because we don't have a display attached to this. So the next thing I'm going to show you is how to set up a virtual display, which will show you what got printed out. So to do that, you go to Production, Set Project Configuration, and then customize. And that'll open up this pane. You want to click on the simulator and you want to click this little drop down menu at the top and go to UART 2 IO options. And now we'll click enable UART 2 IO and make sure that the output is set to window. And I'll click apply and then OK. So what that's going to do is when I hit my first print F command, it's going to open up a new tab down here and I'm going to be able to see the output of the printf commands in that new window. So let's do that now. Again, we go to debug, debug main project. It builds the code and then it starts the simulator. And down here, I've got a new window, just as promised. So if I click on that, it shows me what has been printed. And right now it says AppSci 1299, which means that second line which says lab one part A did not print. So that's something to be aware of. When you reach a breakpoint, it stops at that line before it executes the code. So if I click the next button, it goes into my for loop 
and now it has printed out that second line of code. So I had to go past the breakpoint for the code on that line to execute. And again, I can click a few times to get out of my for loop, and it'll print my message again. So there's AppSci 1299 again, and when I get past that breakpoint, it prints the second line. So I'm going to stop the simulator now, and I'm going to show you what is arguably the most useful thing that the simulator does, and that is that it allows you to watch the instantaneous values of your variables in the code. So that's what I'm going to show you how to do next, is how to watch the values of variables. So I've only got one variable in my code, this n variable. So I'm going to set up a watch on it. So to do that, I right click on n anywhere in my code and I click new watch. And it's going to give me an option of either okaying that variable or choosing a different one. And you can choose a variety of variables or you can also watch special function registers, which you'll be doing later in the semester. But for now, I just want to watch the variable n. So I click OK, and down here at the bottom, there's a new tab that says Variables, and it's got my variable n in it. And over here, it's going to show me the value of n. But right now, n is not defined. I haven't initialized it, so there's no value showing yet. But once I start running the simulator, then a value will show up here. So again, debug, debug main project. It builds the project and then starts the simulator. And now it stopped at the first breakpoint, so I'm just going to look at my variables tab up here again. Now I'll hit the play button and go to my next breakpoint to begin with n equals zero, and that's what it's showing. And if I click the next button again, now I've got a value. So the value being displayed is one in hexadecimal. And if I click again, it goes to two in hexadecimal. Now just so you know, hexadecimal is the default format that it'll show your values in. You often want to look at the binary version or the decimal version instead. So to do that, you right click on the value over here, you go display value column as, and then you can choose a different format. So I'm going to choose binary, and right now it's one zero, which is correct, that's two. And if I click my next button again, it goes one one, which is three. So again, that's correct. If I wanted to display this as decimal, again, right click on the value, display value column as, and go to decimal. So the value is three as expected. And I can click next again, it goes to four, next again, goes to five, next again, and it goes to zero, and click next again to get into my for loop, and now it's one again. So you can watch the variables in your code stepping through their values in real time using breakpoints and a watch window. And like I said, this is probably the most useful thing you can do with your simulator. So let me stop the simulator again to show you one more thing. So the next thing I'm going to show you is how to set up a stopwatch. So a stopwatch allows you to just step through your code and time how long each operation is taking from breakpoint to breakpoint. And that can help you figure out timing issues in the code. So to set up a stopwatch, you first do something a little different. Instead of going to production or debug, you go to window and then debugging, and then you want to choose stopwatch. So down here. So that again is going to open up a new window down here, a stopwatch window, and there's two functions on here that are useful. There's an icon that is going to clear the stopwatch, that is, it'll zero it, so you can start timing again. And there's also a trash icon, which is just going to clear the screen. So I don't want to start timing things with my stopwatch just yet, however, and that's because you're not going to get the correct times unless you tell the simulator how fast your chip is supposed to be running. That is to say, the simulator doesn't know how fast our microchip is unless we tell it. So we have to do that, or else the times that we measure down here with our stopwatch won't be correct. So to set the correct speed, we go to Production, Set Project Configuration, Customize, and we get back to this screen, and again we click on Simulator, and this time we leave the drop-down menu set to Oscillator Options, so that's the default. And then this number in here is the one that we want to change, so we can click in and alter this value. It's going to be set in megahertz, and we just need to choose the correct instruction frequency here. So what you need to do is first look up the speed that your microchip runs at, and then you have to remember that the instruction frequency is going to be one quarter of the chip's frequency. So you look up the frequency that the chip is running at, and you divide by four. And that's something I want you to do, so I'm going to be dastardly and actually hide this value from you, and I'll type in the correct value, and then click Apply and OK. 
So now we're ready to use our stopwatch. So as before, we go debug, debug main project. It compiles the project and then it'll start the simulator. And it gets to the first breakpoint. And now I'll click on this stopwatch tab. And it's giving me a number here, how long it took to get to that point. I'm not really interested in this. So I'm going to clear my stopwatch. That is zero it. And now I'll go to my next breakpoint. And it tells me it took 2,551 instruction cycles to get to that point, And it tells me how many microseconds that was. So a little over 212 microseconds. And I can, if I want to, zero the stopwatch again, press play again, and see how long it takes for me to execute one loop of my for loop. And it says it took 15 instruction cycles, which was 1.25 microseconds. And again, I can zero it, press play, and I should get the same value again. If this pane is getting too cluttered up, click the garbage icon and it clears it for you. So those are the functions you're most likely to use in conjunction with the simulator. Breakpoints, so you can stop your code and see what's happening there. Watch windows, which allow you to watch the value of variables change in real time. A UART2 display, which allows you to see the commands that got printed to the screen. And the stopwatch, which allows you to time how long it takes to get from one breakpoint to the next.